Hey guys, it's Matt with BleepinJeep.com. I've been getting a lot of questions about how to make your own snorkel, and today I'm going to show you how. I can't do an install video because I really don't want a snorkel on either of my Jeeps right now, but I made this about uh, 10 years ago, and I was going through the garage uh, the other day, and I found all of the parts that I used to make mine on my green Jeep. But before we get started, check out the website bleepinjeep.com. We've got all the best off-road videos on YouTube. We've got lots of cool parts like uh, muffler bearings, flux capacitors, and other cool things. And we've got uh, hats and t-shirts as well. So check it out, bleepinjeep.com. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the Facebook page as well. Alright, so you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit, but uh, let me show you what the Jeep looked like. Alright, so just in case you can't tell, this is the engine bay of a Jeep Cherokee. Right here is the engine. Here is the brake booster. This whole square is the engine bay. And this line represents the exterior and the interior of the engine bay. Now I installed this snorkel on a Jeep Cherokee. Um, this is just the way that I found it worked uh, to get everything in there that I needed. Now you don't have to do it like this. This wasn't the ideal situation and I'll tell you why later. But uh, all you really need to do is find out a way to get an air filter inside of a, a canister and everything needs to be pretty much watertight and then come up and exit out of the vehicle and go up high for the snorkel. Now come down lower and I'll show you all the parts. Alright, so the first thing I did when making this snorkel was to map out the exit point. What I did was I bought the parts, all the components that I thought I would need. Probably bought a little bit extra, just in case. And uh, I mapped everything out, laid it in there, and figured out where I needed to cut my hole. In this case, I needed to cut the hole right up here by the brake booster. And that's what I did. I cut a three and a three inch or a three and a half inch hole over here on the side of the fender and then you had to go through another piece of metal and then that was about uh, I'd say it was about two or three inches thick and then you had and then it came into the engine bay after that point. Uh, the hardest part was was this little elbow right here going around the brake booster and it just barely fit in there and uh, and then everything else just kind of fit after after some adjusting uh, let me show you these parts here. This is the little stock rubber thingamabobber that comes off the intake manifold. And I just reused that. And then I had a little piece of 3 inch PVC that went in there and connected onto this rubber piece. Uh, now that rubber piece just... I needed just to make a slight curve because it was really more like this and that uh, allowed me just to get a little more curve out of it. And then I've got another 3 inch piece here that goes into a, uh, what is that, a 45 or something? And then I've got two 90s. Now there's two different types of 90s in PVC. You've got these uh, wide arc like this and then you've got the real tight arc. So I used uh, two of these wide arc pieces to get uh, to get a better airflow for one and also it, it allowed everything to line up, otherwise that would be over here and wouldn't work. So after that is this piece. I, I believe that's a 4 inch to a 6 inch coupler, uh, rubber coupler thing. And then on the inside of that I've got a 6 inch coupler. And then I've got another rubber coupler on the other side of that. And then this was the part that was a little bit tricky. I don't have the filter in here, but I bought a K&N cone filter, and I put that right inside here. It fit really well, and it was very large. And so what I've got here is a 3-inch angle PVC, and then I've got a 3-inch uh, piece of pipe glued to that, and then I've got a 3-inch coupler that sits on top of that. And that allows you to attach your K&N cone filter onto that. 
Now this wasn't the ideal setup because it took about 20 minutes, I'd say, to change an air filter. You'd have to take, kind of take all this apart right here, pull it off, change your filter or clean it or whatever, and then put everything back together. Now that was the only real issue that I had with this whole system was that it wasn't real easy to get in there and change that filter. Anyway, after that, I had another piece of 3 inch PVC right here, and then this 3 inch uh, tight angle on the outside, and then it comes up to this 3 inch piece that goes up the, um, the A pillar, right up next to the windshield. So this 3 inch PVC pipe runs up about 3 or 4 feet, and then I've got a 45 degree on the top of that, and then I've got a 90 on top of that, and then attached to that, I've got this uh, drain pipe. Now they have a little grate that goes over the top of this, but I always use uh, pantyhose. And wrapped it over the top of there, and that worked really well. And to hold it in place up at the top, all I did was drill the hole right here at the top, and then I drilled a hole through the A pillar, and stuck a bolt through there, and attached a nut on the other side. Now that was underneath the, uh, the plastic stuff on the back side of the A-pillar by the windshield so you couldn't even see that bolt. A lot of people ask me if I have water trouble with water coming in here when it rains and to tell you the truth I never did have a problem with water. I'm not sure if that was the pantyhose or just the angle that this was at but um, it worked out really well for the time that I had it on my Jeep. This acts like a ram air and it sucked air in as you're driving down the highway at 70 miles an hour. That air shoots down there pretty fast It catches it like a funnel and uh, forces it right into the intake. Now, the only problems that I had was with this was, like I said before, uh, changing the filter took quite a lot of effort. And I didn't really want to glue all the pieces together because then you'd never be able to change the filter for one, but you'd also never be able to, to um, take it out of the vehicle. But um, if you really wanted to use it in a deep water situation, you'd probably want to glue all the pieces together, in which case uh, you'd never be able to get it out, like I said, but it would be watertight and work really well for you. But the reason I took this off of my Jeep was because I had this on there for about five or six years or so, and I never ran across a situation where I needed to forge this deep of water. And eventually I put in a dual battery setup and I needed the extra space right here for the dual battery because that's where I put uh, my second battery. Uh, for a time when I had the dual battery setup I experimented with a design that had the air filter up top here and that worked really well because I didn't need this big canister in the engine bay but it also looked really goofy and really crappy with the, with the uh, air filter up on the top here. So. I scrapped that design and eventually I got rid of the whole thing altogether because I just never used it. Also, it looks kind of crappy and dirty now because it's been sitting in the shop forever, but uh, whenever I painted my Jeep, I took off the external components and had them paint those to match the color. And it looked really well. Let me show you a picture. Uh, it looked just like, uh, you know, the expensive ones that you pay $300 for, if not even better. Uh, People couldn't even tell that it wasn't, uh, you know, an uh, expensive unit until they got up real close and looked at the, the PVC. Now, I don't remember exactly, but all in all, I'd say it was about $75 or so for all of the PVC components. Uh, that's minus the air filter, which uh, K&N air filter at the time was about $50 for the large cone filter. So that's a lot cheaper as well than one that you would buy online. And it looked really good. Alright guys, so just in case you wanted to build one of these yourselves, I've laid all the parts out here. Uh, you can pause it if you'd like, but all you need is some 3 inch PVC. You need three of these tight uh, 90 degree bends. You need some kind of a drain like that. You need a 45. Uh, you need a coupler. You need two of these longer 90s. Uh, I bought one of these rubber couplers. Now for some reason I used thin wall, PVC, Schedule 20, and thick Schedule 40. Uh, I think that was to neck it down to get into here, but I'm not quite sure. 
This is a Schedule 20 uh, 45 right here with an adapter on the inside to convert down to a smaller size. And then I've got some of these, uh, I think those are 4 inch to 6 inch rubber couplers and then I've got a 6 inch solid coupler that held the, the filter. And then you also need some kind of a cone filter. Alright guys, so that's how I built my own snorkel out of PVC. Don't forget to check out the website bleepinjeep.com. We've got all the best off-road videos on YouTube and on the boring stuff. We have all the parts you could ever want. We've got discounts and coupon codes. And we've got hats and t-shirts. So check it out. Do subscribe and don't forget to like the Facebook page. We'll see you next time. And if you're local and you want a snorkel, hit me up, yo, because I don't want this no more.